Previously on Super Idols RPG Rhythmics ended their first day at Camp Grand Star, and the gang enjoyed a round of s'mores and merriment together. It would have been the perfect cap to the day. Until they all went to sleep and experienced nightmares related to the worst fears they had about their powers. Needless to say, everyone was shaken by this, especially Angie. The last major obstacles they encountered were Bear Lorena, the dancing bear idol, and their ever-present rival group, Sagittaria. Rhythmic surged ahead through the labyrinth and managed to make it to the Grand Star Lodge before anyone else. Their reward? Priority training with the camp's premier super idol trainers, Prophetess and Conduit. Upon reaching Prophetess's magic dream training grounds, Angie wasted no time in making her displeasure with their nightmares known. Will Angie get to punch Prophetess? Find out on today's episode of Super Idols RPG. Hey there, everyone, and welcome back to Super Idols RPG. As always, I'm your GM, Aaron Cerise, and with me today are Dana. Hello. T. Hello. Drac. Hello. Luca. Hello. And Liv. Hello. Ah, oh. <laughs> welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to the, uh, I guess, punching in progress, question mark? Yes. <laughs> Oh, goodness. As we're recording this, it's been like a month since we last recorded, so <laughs> we just have to get back in the right headspace of where we were last time. Um, yes. It's as legitimately a surprise round. <laughs> yes. <laughs> as a reminder, the last thing y'all did before the end of last session was, well, one, you got through the forest labyrinth, finally, hooray, and you all got there first. It's double hooray. So now you find yourselves in a dreamscape constructed by prophetess that you got to by falling asleep and you find yourselves faced with the two of them and angie has just yelled let's get her so um <laughs> quick question yes i got a new move because i advanced yes yes you advanced tell us about that so the move i picked was game face and it's when you commit yourself to save someone or defeat a terrible enemy, mark a condition and take plus one ongoing to all roles in direct pursuit of that goal. Mm. At the end of any scene in which you don't make progress towards that goal, mark a condition. <laughs> when you fulfill your goal, oh <laughs> mark potential. Um, so I'm not going to invoke that just yet. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because uh, I already have two conditions and then that would mean... I Out guess. of curiosity, what conditions do you have? Angry and insecure. Well, you did. It sounds like you're taking full hearty action without talking to your team. <laughs> I'm going to just say that. <laughs> that I'm going to just well, throw that true. out there. That's true. that's true. That is absolutely what I'm doing. Could I <laughs> remove that one? Oh, I think even you you made a move to move forward and punch and you're being held back. So I would take that as a foolhardy action. <laughs> Wait, I'm being held back? By who? Queen B is holding Angie back by the jacket. And okay. Jaden's also trying as well. <laughs> <laughs> then again, you are also the super strong one of the bunch, so. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So can anybody really hold you back? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, no, I'm not going to let them hold me back. <laughs> <laughs> chaos. <laughs> choose chaos, always choose chaos. Angie woke up in a dream and was like, Violence. Let's go. <laughs> and you went to sleep and chose violence. <laughs> yeah, literally. That's yeah, that's literally what happened. Okay. Just to, to keep this um relatively simple, I'm just gonna make y'all do a stat contest for this to see if Angie can break out of this hold. Okay. I'm gonna have both of you roll plus danger, and you can use your influence bonuses against each other if you have influence over each other. I think we all do. Yeah. 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 So everybody who is involved in this role, danger, um, and add a plus one. I think Vivi is just too stunned to act in this moment. <laughs> okay. Hmm. So the highest person here is uh, Queen Bee, who got a twelve. So I think 
even though Bane Raven got a 10, that 12 is going to beat the 10. So I think that's how we're doing it. You know what? No, let's not do it that way. Let's not bend the rules. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, how would how would be best to, to do this? Just going by the rules as written, it would be Angie rolling to do whatever she wants to do, and then other characters can um, roll to defend. Oh, yeah. Or you can use your influence to give someone a minus two on a move they made after they've rolled. Right. You can take advantage of your influence over someone. Right. But you would be giving up your influence over Angie. Hmm. No, I'm not doing that. Yeah. Jaden wouldn't do that. Okay, yeah. So I think that makes more sense. So probably it would be Angie rolls directly engage a threat and somebody rolls defend to defend Prophetess. Okay. Okay. Sorry about the confusion. <laughs> oh, no good. No worries. I'm going to try and defend with the plus one. I'm going to say that Angie's roll of the 10 from before stands. So now you've rolled an 11 to defend. 11. Maybe we can give Angie one shot and then I can deflect her. Wait, I'm still not sure how this works for conflicting actions. Yeah, they're both full of hits. Yeah. I'm willing to take a powerful blow. I was going to suggest the very thing. Mm. I, I kind of want to see Angie punch Prophetess. <laughs> <laughs> kind of me too. Yeah, I think in that case, since um, people do want to see Prophetess get punched, why don't we say that Angie's initial attack succeeds and then Queen Bee gets in the middle of a subsequent attack? Yeah. Does that work for people? Yeah, mm -hmm. that yeah. makes sense. Perfect. Okay. Gonna resist and avoid Prophetess's blows <laughs> and uh, impress, surprise, or frighten the opposition. Okay. So describe what that looks like. She's basically just standing in front of you. Yeah, there's nothing fancy. She runs and punches her, honestly. That's it. Yeah, no, I think she might try to raise a wall out of the ground to block herself, but you're moving pretty quick and she doesn't get it up in time and she goes sailing backward. And Conduit kind of looks at you with a shocked look on his face. At this point, I'm mad. I don't care. <laughs> so she lands on the ground further away. Angie, no. Angie, please, no. Lucia's gonna turn... Like, not even turn, like, lean her head towards Vivi. So, are we gonna stop her? Are we gonna get involved? Um, well, they they said this is a dream where we can't hurt anyone with our powers, so... It's, so we should just let Angie wail on her, right? Is... May, maybe that's the training? <laughs> <laughs> They're like our punching bags. I... May, maybe... Hmm. I'm going to wait and let this play out, because if there's one thing I know, I don't want to be between Angie's target and her fist. That's one thing yeah, I know. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. I'm going to see how this plays out. Yeah, yeah, I'm good back here. So you're chatting in the background as Angie, I assume, is going in for another hit? Yeah. <laughs> yeah well, can I use the defend? Yes. Yeah. So you rolled a full hit on your defend. Well, you give them minus two on their roll. So I guess um, it would be Angie rolling another directly engage at a minus two. Perfect. Okay. All right. Oh, so you still got a mixed success there, in which case I'm going to say you probably get another successful hit in, but you also do hit Queen Bee and Queen Bee is going to take a powerful blow. Ooh. Oh, oh, oh fun. No. Okay. <sighs> Queen Bee goes flying. Yeah, so on a 10+, plus, you either remove yourself from the situation, lose control of yourself or your powers in a terrible way, or two options from the 7 to 9 list. Hmm. I might lash out, and I'll give ground. I give ground, like, literally, I get thrown away five yards away, and I go, Angie, we need that, grow up! But she's a fucking bitch! But then she crosses her arms and goes to help Queen Bee up. <laughs> Yeah, I think getting a couple of punches in probably vented some of your anger a bit. Yeah, but the intention would not have been to hurt my friends, especially yeah. my new best friend as established <laughs> in the last episode. So I would go and I'd just look a bit sheepish as I help Queen Bee up and I'm like, sorry, I was yeah. aiming for her. Yeah, well, the good thing is for Queen Bee, uh, despite Angie's super strength, you definitely don't feel it as much as you normally would. Like, it still feels like you got hit. This is a really realistic dream space, but the impact feels more diffuse than normal and it doesn't shatter you like it probably normally would. It's okay, it's okay. 
Oh. Yeah, and for similar reasons, Prophetess is getting up further away and doesn't seem as phased as you would expect for someone who just took a punch like that. Oh, there's always one. There's always one. She cracks her shoulders a bit and tries to recompose herself. Well, you have any idea what you put us through? Yeah. I Better than you probably are imagining. Yep. It's not pretty, I know. Now I'm like standing behind Queen Bee, who I think is wearing heels and like glaring over her shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> so um, where are we? Uh, you are in one of my specially patented Prophetess dreamscapes. Trademark. Welcome. Hi, I'm Prophetess. Wait, did he, is Trademark part of the name or is it just trademarked? Well... The patent is pending, so I guess it's... I, I'm not sure how all the copyright stuff works, but that's not important right now. Um, tra trademark and patent are two very, very different things. Ah, the lawyers keep telling me that, I know. And she's uh, talking a little bit with Conduit, who's they're trying to work out, like, the specifics of whatever it is that she's talking about. <laughs> anyway, that's not important. The important thing is I did have a reason for gently encouraging your dreams to go in a certain direction, as you might say. Um, as I said at the end of your dreams, I didn't make you see the specific things that you saw. I asked your dreams a question, and they answered it. Sometimes people don't have very strong responses to that question. Other times they do. Wow, that wasn't, like, traumatic or upsetting at all. Yeah, sure, blame us. Yeah, it's our fault. I should be clear, I'm not trying to blame you. I'm, I'm just saying the results are variable and I, I know that it's it can be very upsetting for a lot of people and I do apologize for that. I do still believe that it was necessary, though. Okay. If that's what happened, then you should know already that you only showed us things that we've we already know could happen, that we've already thought about thought about yes felt in that very visceral way that i know that my dreams can call forth i would suspect not as much that's the effect that i was going for is it's something to know something and think about it it's another thing to experience it in a full body and mind kind of way in a traumatizing way. We are children, by the way. I know. And that's the thing. I don't know how much you know about the history of superpowers and how people have handled that over the last 15, however many years. But I... Mm. Uh, and sh she shares a look with Conduit and they both share like a kind of kind of pained look. I have seen far too many young people, far too many friends hurt themselves and other people to not want to drill into every young idol that I meet the dangers that come with having the kinds of powers that they do. Because people were far too careless with that power for far too long and it cost a lot of people well, it cost them a lot. Well, it's yeah. Well, some of us are very aware of that, and that's that's why we're here. Yeah. Um. I don't know what everyone else saw, but what I saw, I, the only way I can think about avoiding that is getting better with my powers. Um. And I guess that's what we're we're here to do. Hmm. E exactly. That's. I do want to impress on you that I didn't just set out to, haha, I traumatized you all, I got you. Oh no. I wanted to do this because I wanted to give you the whole picture of the Super Idol experience. Because I do feel like that's necessary when there's this much on the line with people's powers. There's a lot of danger to contend with when it comes to Super Idol powers, but you're right. The flip side of that is that... Once you understand the extremes that your powers are capable of, you can begin to shape them and wield them in more masterful, controlled, and more importantly, safe ways. My dad always said that the entertainment industry, like, 
eats people up and spits them out or whatever. So, yeah, it makes sense that super idols are even worse. And I guess I can see the value in this. It's like a muscle. If you don't work it out, it'll just, you know, meh. Yeah, like very much so. And I I know that it's not the most like morally pure way to teach people, especially kids. I know it's but I don't know, in my mind, if it saves more kids from killing each other with their god powers that they don't know how to use, it's something I'm willing to do. So you couldn't just be like, hey, um, I'm going to do this like before we go to sleep. You just had to bombard us with it instead. Oh, yeah, the, de- definitely people would say yes to, hey, do you mind if I ask your dreams to show you some scary ass shit to teach you a lesson? How many people do you think are going to say yes to that? I think there's a way you can say, hey, as part of your training, we're going to send you down a dark path where it's the worst case scenario, but I feel like you have to see it. I think informed consent matters, especially when you're dealing with kids like us. During this argument, Vivi has just been staring at the floor. And I think while Prophetess and Angie are arguing, I think Conduit notices this and he makes his way over to you and he asks, hey, um, I, I know this, this is some intense stuff going on. Are you okay? You look a little out of it. Oh, no, I, I've, I've been through tough training um, to prepare me for the idol world before it's no, I, I, I understand. Mm. Uh, say no more. I, I've been through a lot of harsh training myself in my time. Um, you sound like you, you mean that in a very kind of like official kind of way. Um, can I ask which label you're with? Uh, yes, with Rain Shadow. I work directly with Mary Rain. Oof. Uh, he like winces at that. Like, oh. My condolences. I, uh, yep, okay, yep, that makes sense. Um, it's, it's been very, very good for me, but, um, thank you. Yeah, well, I, you can't argue with their results sometimes, but, yeah, you know, <laughs> I'm in the same kind of boat, too. We, we, hmm, sometimes there's a lot of harsh realities to this kind of training. Some of those labels take it a little further than others well like i said that's why we're here to do what we need to to get stronger Mm -hmm. to succeed and i do i do want to help you and so does tess so does tess and let's go back to the prophetess and angie argument for a sec (laughs) i um i gotta think of a good response to that too (laughs) because angie's making good points she knows the corporate legal speak from her mom (laughs) (laughs) oh and that's the thing because like she's not trying to like corporate speak you she genuinely believes this but (laughs) no i mean like where she learned terms like informed consent and stuff like that she definitely got that from her mom Mm -hmm. yeah (laughs) would have definitely been like don't sign a contract or blah blah Mm -hmm. blah like they would have had that (laughs) conversation i think she's probably just gonna say like well in my experience far too many people say no and they are informed of that happening uh, so uh, it really just the only way to get enough people to experience this is to just hit them with it. I'm sorry to say it's not perfect. That's that's how I work. Sorry. It's OK. My mom will file a complaint and then I just storm away. I think Lucia goes after Angie kind of like looks at Prophetess like, sorry, goes after Angie. And it's just like, it's OK. It's OK. Like we made it. We survived. It's going to be OK. I think at this point, um, Prophetess is going to uh, walk away as well. As she walks, a set of neon stairs rise out of the field that you're all standing on. You're basically standing on like a Tron Legacy grid right now. So uh, she starts ascending these neon spiral stairs up to a podium that forms, like a DJ type podium that forms at the top of them. She says, okay, so I know this is not the greatest energy to start this off with, but I do want to get into the work as quickly as we can because there's a lot of campers here that I have to work with and I I do want to make sure that you get all the training that you can out of this and I promise you probably you're gonna like conduits part of this more than mine so I'm just gonna take a back seat for now 
and the stairs dematerialize from the podium and the podium moves further back. And she's going to be kind of on the outside of this area for a bit. Basically, she's going to act as the controller for the environment for what's about to happen. While she moves back, Queen Bee gives a two finger to the eyes, two finger in a direction thing. <laughs> I'm watching you, yeah. <laughs> Jaden just gives a little smile on wave and just goes, okay, sorry, sorry about my friend. Don't apologize to her. It's okay, you seem very nice. Sorry, Angie, I won't apologize either. <laughs> Once um, Prophetess is in place, Conduit is going to move more in front of you and take more of the active instructor role here. So, um... So here's, you've well, basically you've gathered, we're in a dream space. You've already gathered, um, thankfully, that any harm that you suffer in here is going to hurt a lot less than it would in the real world. And even serious life-threatening damage is, at worst, just going to cause you to wake up. So first off, anything that you do with your powers in here, you can be relatively assured that nobody's going to get seriously hurt by. And... Basically, my goal here is, you know me, my whole deal is I can be a, well, a conduit for your powers. <laughs> and the way that Prophetess wanted to emphasize the dangers of your powers, I want to help you emphasize the strengths of them and help you feel what it's like to actually use your powers at their full strength with no consequences so you know more like what it feels like where the limits of your powers are. Like she said, so that you can get a better feel for basically your limits, feeling where your limits are and knowing when to rein yourself in if you feel like you're getting close to them. Okay, um, that sounds good and I guess the dream is probably the best place to do that. How how do we start? Well, I guess I'll, I'll ask for a volunteer who wants to go first. I'll go. <laughs> right, because and this is still Angie's boyfriend that she wants to marry. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's right. I think Jamie like has his hand halfway up and then sees Angie's enthusiasm and just quickly I... pulls it down. It's not even that. It's like she's really mad about Prophetess and she I think there's a part of her that wants to show that she is in perfect total control right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, totally. I'm sure that will go well. Also, I, I want to say I do love that before we even got here, Angie, true to form, had already picked a love and a rival between our trainers. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, God, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Truly incredible. Really, yeah, really in playbook fashion. <laughs> Very much <laughs> all. Oh, oh, okay. Uh, Conduit looks taken slightly aback, but he's, but he's, well, I can't say no to enthusiasm. Uh, sure. Uh, Bane Raven, right? Uh, take a step forward here. Okay. And then I'm like, it's like totally different night and day. <laughs> 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 and she kind of, I don't know, skips <laughs> to the point where he tells her to stand. Yeah, he raises an eyebrow, but he's like, okay. He can't, this cannot be the first time a giddy teenager is still in training. <laughs> okay, so Bane Raven, first tell me a little bit about your powers. Um, I punch stuff, obviously. I can see and that. And I can do this, and then I do the fireworks effects, like, further away this time. Okay, okay, all right. Yeah, and I dance, and that's mostly it. Yeah, it, it, from the strength of your punches, it looks like you've got a little bit of super strength going on too, right? Yes. Okay. So, first, I guess the obvious thing to do would be to test the limits of your strength. So, uh, Tess, why don't you generate the big weight, all right? And she nods from where she is and begrudgingly out of the neon generates what looks like a giant barbell made out of neon hard light. It's about as tall as you are. So first, show me about how much you can lift unaided without me helping you. Okay. And I do, I guess. Sure. I don't even know how much she can actually lift. Like, we've never had her actually try to lift a car or anything like that. But <laughs> um, Why don't we represent this with an Unleash Your Powers roll to see how well, it, how far her strength can go. Sure, sure. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> That's a five. All right. So, 
I think it, this isn't necessarily going to mean this is the limit of your strength. That this is just the limit of what you can lift right now under the current circumstances. You do lift it, but it looks like you're definitely having trouble. And possibly because it looks like you can kind of in the distance see Prophetess turning up a dial the more you, you lift it and the thing starts to get oh heavier. <laughs> yeah, so and then I'm getting catchy. like progressively angrier at her at the same time. And it's also distracting. <laughs> um, and I think uh, I'm going to have you remark insecure. So after a bit, Conduit stops you and is like, okay, you can lift quite a bit. It does look like if you're under stress, that can affect how much you lift. That's good to know. Um, now let's try it with some help. So keep your hands on the bar and he's going to put his hands on your shoulders and you're, and you oh, feel, no. yes, <laughs> Uh, like just a big solid I'm gonna spot you kind of touch not like a I know I know <laughs> that's not how she takes it yeah yeah <laughs> anyway so he puts his hands on your shoulders and you can feel this warmth coursing through your body especially like a warmth glowing in your chest the core of your being is lighting up with strength and assurance and a feeling of confidence all right, now try that again. And I'm not even going to make you roll. Tell me how you lift this incredible weight. So it's like a barbell? Yes. I don't know, it's hard to describe because I haven't done weightlifting, but I think she'd just do it. But it's the kind of thing where maybe she did it not expecting the strength to be very different. So she just didn't have to heave as much as she normally would. And she just kind of does it and tosses it. But, like, somewhere not dangerous where it's going to actually hit anybody. But just, like, she picks it up, puts it over her head, and, like, throws it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and you can even feel, like, again, like, the weight is increasing as you lift it. But it's not even a problem this time. It's like lifting a pool noodle for you. And you lift it up over your head, and you toss it. It lands in the distance kind of near Prophetess's podium, which kind of shuffles off to the side in response. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't intentional, she says. <laughs> I, I believe you. But yeah, no, you can feel the difference though, right? Yeah. You were confident. You knew what you wanted to do. You weren't just using your power blindly. When you focus your power in the right way, you have a lot more at your disposal, right? Yeah. And I would imagine... The same thing probably goes for your other abilities, like, say, your fireworks. Those look like they were just like a visual thing before, right? Yeah. I mean, and then she just does a few more just for flavor. <laughs> Have you ever tried to see if they could be pushed like beyond that? Uh, not really. Or like to see if there's anything else you might be able to do? I never thought about it. Like, how honest. did you discover, like, what your, what the shape of your powers were to start with? Like, when you first got them? Um, I got mad. So that was how I discovered I was really strong. Um, as for the fireworks, I was just kind of messing around on a practice stage by myself. And I just did it when I was celebrating a cool move. Okay. Yeah, no, this is good. It sounds like you haven't been using your powers for terribly long yet, and there might still be room for you to discover more powers that you just haven't been put in the situation to discover yet. And uh, that goes for all of you, I would say. And he gestures to the whole group like, has anyone here had powers for a particularly long time or are you all like really new at this? I'm I'm pretty new at this. Yeah, I'd say new. Yeah, OK. That's pretty common with the campers your age that we get here. So that's something I'm used to. And generally, what that means is there's often a lot of pockets of power and ability that you don't even know that you have because you haven't pushed your powers in the right way or you've been too scared to, like, test certain things out or whatever it is. But I feel like we're going to discover some new things about your powers today. And I'm honestly really excited to figure out what those all are. 
So he puts his hands on Angie's shoulders again and gives like a squeeze, like so that the power will stay in you without him having to touch you. And T, I had asked you about like kind of what powers you were thinking that you might want to enhance or add for Angie. Yes. What do you think we want to get into here? Uh, We talked a little bit about the fireworks powers actually being a force kind of thing. Mm. and having them do more than visuals. And also, I would like her to be able to shapeshift. Yeah. Certainly, I'm willing to grant it. (laughs) (laughs) And a space where I can do whatever I want (laughs) in terms of powers. And because you're working with Conduit's special power enhancing magic, for these roles, I'm going to say that the actual power usage for whatever you're doing is going to work but when you roll for unleash your powers it's just going to determine whether like you have an adverse reaction like an emotional reaction or something like that it's not going to be like harm or anything or causing destruction so what would you like to have angie work on first we're gonna abstract some of this out (laughs) so we don't have to play the whole training session yeah yeah for sure it really should be a montage for all of us. But. Yeah. And again, yeah. I don't want to have to have Conduit do this whole conversation for everybody. So. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, yeah. So uh, we'll try the thing with the fireworks because uh, I feel like he brought it up and that feels more organic. Yeah. And you all have noticed that uh, when he touches her shoulders the second time, she's more focused on what the powers can do and less OMG, it's Conduit. Now she's <laughs> focused on the task at hand. Mm hmm. Yeah, and certainly, like, the way that his power works is, like, you can kind of even feel the flow of the power within you in a way that you normally can't. Almost like it's physicalized in a way, like you can feel what power is going where and doing what. Not in a way that you can fully understand, but that is more concrete than it normally is. Cool. So you can have more of a chance of a brainwave of, like, things you can try. Yeah, so basically, I guess she's going to try and make the fireworks hit something. And uh, I think she'll just say that out loud. She's like, I'd like to try and make my fireworks uh, hit something or destroy something. All right. So Prophetess is going to make a big neon like archery target for you. And then you can roll to unleash your powers again. Guess we'll see. (laughs) Oh, (laughs) okay. (laughs) And I I don't think we can use um, team for this sort of thing, since it's a very individual thing. Yeah. This is going to be successful, but I think the power might be a little overwhelming for you, so I'm going to have you take another condition. I guess I'll take afraid. Sure. So describe how this, like, burst of power looks and how it makes you feel. So she starts off and, like, it's kind of crackling around her fingers in a way that she normally can't do but she kind of builds a ball of fireworks. It's like crackling energy. It's hard to hard to describe, but she and then she tosses it. But as soon as it explodes, it's really bright and it does a wave that kind of knocks everyone over, but not in a way that hurts anybody. Mm -hmm. Um, Controlled space and all that and including her. And I think after she recovers, she kind of sees that the target is totally destroyed. So there's not like a spot that's like oh I got a bullseye or anything like that it's just she can see the pieces raining down and um, because she's never done something like that before uh, yeah it's really scary actually yeah I can see why yeah <laughs> yeah how does everybody else feel about being knocked back by this shock wave that Angie's just generated that was big sorry oh sorry my gosh. Oh, it's, it's okay fuck. don't worry it's all good and then I'm like going to help everybody up and stuff, <laughs> even prophetess sheepishly. <laughs> well, I think she's fine. She's like in the podium or whatever, so she's probably fine. Yeah, but you can see prophetess like uh, climbing back up the stairs onto the podium as you do this. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> and puts a little barrier behind herself to stop that from <laughs> happening again. Um, that that was cool. Yeah, that was yeah, that was awesome. A lot, but awesome. Yeah, it was pretty cool, right? Yeah, I I had no idea you could do that. Yeah, me neither. Me neither. Probably practiced that one a a lot. Yeah, and I think that's kind of what you do for a bit after this, is you do practice using that blast a few more times so that it becomes more familiar to you. 
And as you do this, you get a little more confident about using it. Cool. So as you continue to do more of these fireworks blasts and you get more used to using them and you get in your groove, you feel like the the power within you, this surge of raw energy, like just getting stronger and stronger the more you do this. And it feels like there's something in your body that feels like it wants to like physicalize that. And T, why don't you tell us what comes of that? She's sparring a bit with Conduit as they're practicing because, uh, once again, controlled environment, so her fireworks aren't actually, like, hurting him. Yeah, he encourages you even. Like, it's fine. You're not hurting me. Keep going. Yeah, so they're probably, like, dance sparring, you know? And she probably swipes at him in a way that she normally wouldn't. And then she kind of notices that she has claws. And then at first she's like, what the fuck? But then she just kind of lets it happen. So she continues fighting, and then it just kind of happens pretty quickly. There's like pink fireworks. And then she's a pink tiger. Yeah! Oh my god. Is everyone is everyone seeing that? Yeah, and, and Conduit looks super excited when this happens. Like, yes! Oh, this is exactly the kind of thing I was hoping for. <laughs> Lucia's dead quiet first, like out of pure shock, and then just starts like cheering, just <laughs> just hollering at the top of her lungs because this is cool as hell. <laughs> so I imagine this happening where like she lunges at him with the claws and then fireworks tiger, and then she's like, holy fuck, and then she kind of skids on the ground and then like into the wall. <laughs> <laughs> But then, like, after that, she just takes note that she's a tiger, and then she just starts running around in circles around everyone. (laughs) So cool. (laughs) Oh my god, look at you! Look at you! You're a tiger! What is happening? Are we gonna turn into tigers? Oh, I don't know if I want that. I I kind of... I want to be a dog. And then there's, like, a voice in your mind. It's like she doesn't speak, but she's kind of like... I can run so fast, guys. And then she just keeps running. Oh my god, full on animorphs. Oh, she's oh an anim- yeah. yeah, she's an animorph. I yeah. love it. <laughs> uh, Vivi is just speechless. And then eventually, like, she gets tired of it and she kind of sits on her haunches. And then she's kind of like, I'm just going to stay like this for a while. <laughs> and, like, licks her paw, and does the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, and I think while you're doing that, um, Conduit's like, Yeah, like, everybody can find out stuff like that about their powers. Like, who wants to go next? Come on, next person. I'll go. I'll go next. Yeah, come on. Come on up at Elementum. Let's go. Do we get to choose what animal we become, or is that just a thing that happens? That might just be a Bane Raven thing, but who knows? Like, weirder stuff has happened. Okay, I'm hoping I get to choose, but okay. And he's going to walk up to the spot that Condit points out to him. Yeah, so I think we're going to do, like, the whole thing where, like, you explain your powers and he asks you those questions again. And you do the whole thing with the thing on the shoulders and the power coursing through you. Tell us what kind of power you would like to explore. I've been thinking, I want Jaden to be able to bend and control other elements, like electricity. Ooh. And um, also, I want to, um, to, like, maybe sense around him using the elements that are around him so he doesn't need to use his eyes. Yeah. Like Daredevil style. Yeah. Through the vibrations of the air or the ground, whatever, whichever one he's touching or feeling at the time. Oh, okay. Oh, wait. And also, I don't know if this is too much, but <laughs> to um, also be able to manipulate plants, just like at least the yeah. water in the plants to induce growth or impede the growth of it and stuff like that. Mmm, swamp bending. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. I was thinking when you said like more elements, like you have electricity, you have plants you have other things that could come from the elements that you already have like maybe you could do metal like you could do some magneto shit too oh that'd be fun yeah that i want to do that he already has the power of heart (laughs) yeah (laughs) that was his core element all along (laughs) (laughs) yeah i'm trying to be a master of more elements Mm -hmm. yeah so you start out using your normal elemental powers and they're already pretty strong and I think Conduit keeps encouraging you to, like, push further, look for more avenues that you can push through. Like, what does that look like for you? I 
think when he keeps insisting that Jaden should push further, Jaden kind of remembers it was a while back, but back when we were in the alley, we we're trying to figure out where the traces of the water vapor weed we were tracking down was from. And he kind of opened himself up a bit too much to the elements around him. And I think she's going to try and repeat that. And mm. as he does, they can see the air around him, like each individual particle. And he slowly tries to move bits of it individually and ends up moving the electrons in it. Sorry, this is me being a nerd. Move the electrons in it um, <laughs> specifically mm. to induce an electric current. Oh. And around him, you kind of smell ozone as he pulls the electrons from the oxygen around him. And then he pushes outwards and just the sudden flow and force of electrons just pulse out of him. And that's going to be his attempt of trying to bend electricity. All right. So I'm going to have you roll to unleash your powers. Ooh, okay. Uh, let's see if my luck... Ooh, a hit. A hit. Yeah, yeah. That's good. Yeah, and I think definitely this is going to be successful. I think probably for your first attempt, it's not going to be like as impressive as you maybe want this to be, but it is going to be more than you've done with this sort of thing for sure, and it's still going to be a very pleasant surprise for you. Okay, did everyone see that? That was like, it was small. I know it was a small shock, but did, did everyone see it? Yeah, that was totally cool. Wait, do you think I could charge my phone like with this? <laughs> you can try um, and conduit gestures. Maybe try on an old phone. Do we have like a dream old phone? You see like a neon phone construct generated out of the air. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was going to try immediately try to charge the phone with it. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Roll to charge your phone. <laughs> Wait, should I actually? Because he might blow it up, which would be pretty funny. Eh. Well, it's meant to be blown up if you're going to. No, he, it's a hit. <laughs> yeah, it's a hit. I got it up to 10%, guys. 10%. <laughs> yeah, it's going kind of slow. That's the consequence, but it is working, is the thing. This is great. Okay, I want to see what else I can do. Okay, um, Vivi's off to the side, just like clapping politely. <laughs> Queen Bee sidles up to Angie and she's like, so is it okay if I pet you? Um, yeah, sure. (laughs) Pat the head. That's so cool. Oh, get behind the ear. (laughs) And I think as you do this, uh, there's probably going to be some more, more practice with the electricity. I think you're able to get progressively bigger and more impressive bolts that are shattering more and more of these like neon constructs that Prophetess is creating for you. So you get a strong sense of progression there. Jaden's absolutely loving every single second of it. Like every little thing is like, I did it. I did a thing. It, it, it worked. <laughs> How do you think it goes from the electricity to the idea that maybe you could do plants? Um, I think so with the way he's been trying to um, do this he kind of imagines or at least he thinks he's imagining but it's probably like he actually is seeing the individual particles of like air around him and the radius of that kind of expands a little bit he starts picking up the atoms and molecules inside the, maybe the grass underneath his feet mm-hmm. and he just out of curiosity it's probably like Conduit probably didn't even tell him to do this I feel like Conduit probably told him to keep working on the electricity and then he noticed that he could feel the molecules in the grass as well yeah so he kind of started playing with that instead and then noticed that he could encourage the growth of the plant life around him Mm-hmm. and that's just even more excitement from Conduit like even though you're not doing the thing he said like he wants you to discover as many things as possible like oh yeah 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 that, it, it, definitely do that too do that too I don't know. Okay, um, I'm gonna try and get this dandelion to s- grow. <laughs> He's gonna try, gonna just focus on the single dandelion. <laughs> All right, give me another one of them rolls. Ooh, my luck. Ooh, oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> so I think what happens here is like it definitely works, but I think it works too well. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> <laughs> so that's gonna be why you take a condition. Oh, what would make sense? I only have angry and hopeless left. Don't don't forget to uh, take potential for all of your failed rolls, everyone. Oh, oh yeah, that's true. Oh, yes, yeah, everybody we're, definitely do oh, that. Yeah. We're learning and growing here. <laughs> we love the mistakes. <laughs> um, if I may give a suggestion. Please. Isn't one of Jaden's, like, biggest things that he's afraid of, like, his own powers and how to control them? Yeah. 
So if it's like working, but it works too well, maybe you're feeling hopeless because it's like, God, even during this training where I'm supposed to be getting better. Oh, yeah. You know, it's like, am I ever going to be better? Yeah, I'm going to go with that. Yeah, and I think it's been going so well that he kind of almost assumed that it would keep going well and seeing it suddenly not, realizing that it's not going to just always go his way. Yeah, I think it's hopeless makes sense in that case, yeah. A teenager feeling like their life is over forever and always just because they made one mistake? <laughs> How unrealistic! <laughs> How unrealistic. See, I think he's like crouched down over this dandelion and he's trying really hard to like make it. I think it's like it's like a little bud, so it hasn't like fully um, flowered yet. And he's trying to make it sprout. And all of a sudden it just not erupts, but just becomes enormous and knocks him backwards in the process. Even though roots of the plant kind of grow as well, so it kind of uproots the earth. And I'm going to take a page from Andy's book. And I think it kind of almost sends a tremor through the ground, which knocks everyone to the ground. <laughs> Sorry. No, don't worry about it. Like, that's that's very impressive. Like, did you mean to make it that big? Or or was that, like, an unexpected burst for you? Um, it was unexpected. I just wanted to make the bud flower. Okay, so I, I get the sense from your powers. They're broad enough and powerful enough that you're probably worried about control, it sounds like, I would guess, right? He kind of gestures at the massive dandelion in front of him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, first, the good thing is now you know that you can make a dandelion grow that big that quickly. So that's knowledge is power is one thing. But more importantly, he's been letting you use like the touchless version of the power for a bit like he did with Angie. But for this, he's going to like, uh, do you do you know much about dance? Are you a dance idol or not so much? Um, no, that's not really my thing. I, I'm i more of the, I guess, a drummer. I can play the guitar as well. It's like, I guess I keep the beat and help with the rhythm. Oh, okay. Um, do you know how to follow a, a lead, at least? Um, and he, he like, takes your takes your hand in sort of like a waltz-type pose? I mean, my mum made me take lessons, so yeah. That's good enough. Like, all I need is for you to follow my motions at the most. Okay. All right, and he's going to waltz a bit with you, and as you do, you can feel more of that calming, confident power flowing through you. And as he dances you through this, he's going to say, Okay, so you wanted to make the dandelion flower, but you didn't want to make it grow. So what I want you to do is, as we're moving, I want you to focus on your breathing. I want you to focus on the picture in your head of this bud blooming but staying the same size and I'm going to help you with this and you're going to get a plus one to your next Unleash Your Powers. Oh, okay. So I think, uh, you know, let me roll it first and see how well it goes before I describe sure. anything. <laughs> yeah. Okay, cool. Full success. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> so I think, um, I don't, maybe Conduit hasn't really worked with like people who specifically do instruments but like even with the waltz it's not helping Jaden as much as he guesses that Conduit thinks it would so he kind of closes his eyes and instead of concentrating on the movements he kind of concentrates on the beat and everything kind of like drowns yeah. out around him and it's just the beat of the drum and the cymbals in time with the movements instead and that kind of um, I guess like controls the flow of energy that's coming out of him as he tries to make the next, maybe the nearest standard line he could find, Sprite's flower as well. All right, and you absolutely do that. When you open your eyes, you see exactly the dandelion that you meant to make flower has flowered and has not changed size. Okay, that was a lot easier. And the dance finishes at this point, and he's like, okay, sorry if that was awkward. I, I, it's just the best way I know how to, like, channel my power in a way that is more helpful to people so but you did fantastic though thank you uh, okay hold on and he's gonna just go and pluck the flower and put it in his hair yeah oh i also imagine this with like the way that Jaden's profile art looks with the sparkles in his hair oh yeah that's <laughs> <laughs> so cute hey there everyone and welcome to the middle bit hey hello Hi. Hi. How you doing? You're looking real good there. Have 
Have you done something new with your hair? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I hope, as always, that you're enjoying the episode. I do have a couple things to go over with you today before we get back to it, so apologies, you, <laughs> you may need to strap in for a bit. First off, I want to tell you about an extra release that we have coming up on the feed next weekend for y'all. I have just recently finished a secret project that I have been working on since early December, an in-depth summary and highlight reel of the first arc of the show. Basically, it's me narrating the events of the gig arc, interspersed with clips from the episodes themselves, so yes, this is basically a clip show, but I have tried to structure it so that it can function as a full-on replacement to the first arc if need be. Which is our- I know, it's sounding better and better all the time. <laughs> but the intent behind this is that this could be something, say, that you could show to people in your life who don't listen to actual play podcasts. And, like, can't be bothered with game mechanics talk or tangents or anything like that. Or, like, because it breaks the immersion or whatever. I have family members like that that I would love to show this show to, but I can't <laughs> because they don't- they're not in that sphere. Um, so it's- Partly I'm making it for myself for that reason, um, but if you have the same use case, uh, it'll, be, it'll be there for you. Um, the other use case would be if you do listen to actual play podcasts, you could use it to catch up on the storyline and listen to some of our more recent episodes if you don't have time to catch up on the actual episodes themselves. Which is entirely fair, I think, because I think anyone who's pretty deep into podcast listening knows the backlog struggle. <laughs> Yeah, I wanted to give an option that would help with that problem if people want or or need it. So I guess in that sense, I would liken this more to an anime compilation movie than a clip episode. Like I tried to structure it as much as possible to make it like comprehensible and still hit the right emotional beats, even if you've never heard the show before. Would it be more impactful if you actually listen to the episodes? Absolutely it would, but if someone really can't do that for whatever reason, I would like the summary to be available as an option. So I'm very excited to put that out. I'm planning to put out the finishing touches on it this week and have that up on Saturday, February 12th. The YouTube premiere will be at the usual time, so that's 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern. Uh, the video version in particular will be a special treat because I also want the video version for the summary to be more like visually interesting than a regular episode. So I've put more effort into like highlighting who's speaking and having the character portraits move around and having other little animations and images pop up throughout. So <laughs> again, something that people who don't normally listen to the podcast can watch. <laughs> So yeah, I look forward to that. I'm very excited to, to getting to show that to people. Second thing I want to talk about is something fairly major on the back end of things, but which hopefully shouldn't affect you, the listener, too much. As of this episode, we have actually switched podcast hosting providers. We were previously on Castos and are now on Simplecast. Our new podcast landing page is superidolsrpg.simplecast.com. If you're subscribed through a podcatcher like Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Pocket Casts, whatever, um, you shouldn't have to change anything. Everything should already be redirecting to our new feed. That said, stuff can always go wrong with software and internet and RSS stuff, so if anyone does experience anything weird with updates or downloads or links or anything like that, please let us know. You can add us on Twitter, at SuperIdolsRPG, or you can email superidolsrpg at gmail.com and I'll help you figure out any issues if they come up. As to why we moved, well, that's pretty simple. Castos is apparently integrating cryptocurrency payments into their service. And yeah, that's a, that's a no-go for me. <laughs> I, I'm pretty hardline against the entire sphere of crypto, NFTs, and related technologies like play to earn and whatnot. I won't get into the details here because it would derail this episode far, far too much but I will link a couple videos in the description if you're curious to learn like more about why that stuff is so scammy and terrible. You'll, uh. Suffice to say, we are not staying on a platform that supports crypto, and it may be for the best anyway, because Simplecast has a few cool new features I'm excited about. Namely, they allow you to have transcripts right on their episode pages, which I think is a great accessibility option. We currently have transcripts available for episodes one through nine, and those are all available now, both on our Simplecast site and on our regular WordPress site, that's just superidolsrpg.wordpress.com. 
So if you want to read those or you want to share Super Idols with someone who would need transcripts, those are there for you. Right now I'm trying to get one new transcript commission per month. Sometimes I have to skip a month or two when I can't afford it, but I want to do what we can with the budget that we have for the show because, again, accessibility is pretty important, especially in the audio sphere. Shout out, by the way, to our transcriptionist, Cassie Hausschild. She is doing consistently great work, especially like considering that with actual play and like similar nerdy podcasts, there's a lot of specialized terminology at play, and that's difficult to do correctly and consistently. So thank you, thank you so much, Cassie, for the work that you've been doing. We really, really appreciate it. And you know how you can help enable me to pay folks like Cassie and our wonderful dialogue editor, Kathleen? Why, you can support us over on Patreon at patreon.com slash Aaron Cerise. Pledging $1 or more per month gets you extra audio and before and after session talk for various episodes. For this episode, there's both a before and after session talk, so that's about 10 minutes or so of extra audio for this episode. And for $5 a month, you get the uncut version of every episode. This episode has a few longer tangents that were cut for time, but they were still pretty fun and I was honestly kind of disappointed to have to cut them, so if you want to hear those, they will be available to you in the $5 tier. Also, if you're a $5 Patreon subscriber, you get your name shouted out here in the middle bits on occasion. This episode, I want to give a shout out to Jordan Cuttlefish, The Joiner, Matthew F., Orabolt, Pike, Lady Plague, Blake1995, Noreen, Circus, and Sensei1477. Thank you all so much as always for supporting the show. Okay, and I think that's about all for me for this middle bit. It's been a long one, I know. Thank you for sticking with me through it. Be sure to check out this week's ad for Goblets and Gays, and I will talk to y'all again in the next episode. Bye! What does a barbarian war criminal, an undead cultist, a pyromaniac goblin, a hot topic reject, and a bard whose family is very, very cursed all have in common? Well, that's very simple. They're all our main cast. We are Goblets and Gays, a mostly Pathfinder 2E podcast set in a homebrew world. If Pathfinder isn't your thing, we have all sorts of other awesome games for you to enjoy. Join us every Wednesday for episodes of our main campaign, Blood of Kings, as these chaotic gays attempt to locate some missing royalty. Don't forget to follow us on all social media channels at Goblets and Gays to stay up to date with our amazing projects. And remember to eat your vegetables. Okay, after much deliberation and chat, I think I'll try to go. I think I <laughs> have right. an idea. <laughs> so, Lucia has, you know, her illusion abilities, which we've seen a lot of, but she has never really, like, delved too much into her luck-bending abilities, her luck manipulation, because it's always been, like, little things, right? Like, oh, I can make sure... My older sibling subs their toe on their way down the stairs, things like that. So I kind of want her to boost that up. Just just put some stats into her luck <laughs> to kind of be able to do more things, bigger things. And in our brainstorming process, it was brought up of like, well, what if Lucia can like kind of get like almost like a danger sense or like a sense of how... How the tides of luck are turning and flowing. Oh, like a mild precog thing. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Like a souped up spidey sense. Yes, exactly. So Lucia senses a tingling. <laughs> Wait, yeah. her Peter tingle. <laughs> Trixie senses, yeah. <laughs> Trixie tingle, I hate that. <laughs> yes. The Trixie, Trixie tingle, tingle, that's it. Uh, Jaden's calling it t- when Trixie masters this. Jaden's gonna put forever call it a Trixie tingle. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> um, but yeah, and just really like get into that of like being able to just bend luck and sense it and get a real feel for it. Oh, this reminds me kind of like um, there's a villain on critical bits who has like a really strong version of this power which basically is like the power to control probability to make like insane rube goldberg type things happen yes Mm -hmm. that is eventually in 
20 years from now, when Trixie is a <laughs> huge, massive success, that's like 100% the reason why. And you never want to get into a rap battle with her be- for that very reason. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, Can I give me Black Cat plus Domino vibes? Yeah. yeah I mean, yeah. I've said it from the beginning, like, like Jinx has always been like a huge inspiration. Jinx, Black Cat. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That was kind of like what I wanted for Trixie was for her to get really into this whole luck thing. Okay. And then there was one other thing, but I feel like I don't want to reach too much. You know what I mean? Oh, we've already had a lot of reaching and I'm encouraging all of it. <laughs> Take a drink for every time I live. Re- I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I cannot believe you would do that to me. <laughs> um... Okay, so the other thing, and this has been something that's been on my mind ever since Lucia's debut episode, I want her to get some sort of force field type of a situation. Mm. Because her dad was like, hey, if you could learn how to protect yourself, that would make me feel a lot better about things. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, it could be a, like a luck kind of thing. I feel like in that era around you, you're so lucky nothing can hit you. That's what I was thinking too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I almost feel like it could be two forms. You could have that. And also hard light is a thing that is established in this universe and your power is light control. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah, true. I, I was thinking it'd be one of those two things. Does anybody remember that movie? Like, uh, I think it was called <laughs> Push. Yeah. Oh my god. No, I, I didn't. <laughs> Wait, no, but I actually unironically loved Push. <laughs> I liked it too. Fun. It was good. Yeah. And they had like, uh, when the telekinetic people thought they could do some kind of like a, a shield that was, uh, it did like a refraction effect. Exactly, exactly. Ooh, yeah. It's her taking the like beam of light that's hitting the somebody at some angle and just hardening it for a second or Mm -hmm. you know casting bless on the whole group and now we have a luck circle yeah (laughs) you know (laughs) just god i like that so that's what i was thinking yeah for miss Trixie, how are we gonna build to that (laughs) (laughs) um well because i think like she lifts herself off of the ground because jada knocked all of us to the ground this is just this is a lot. And I think she just kind of dusts herself off and she's like, okay, well, um, I'll go next. So then we don't have to worry about anybody getting knocked off their feet. And she like I'm looks so, at Jaden and Angie. <laughs> also, that happened like five minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> True. <laughs> Jaden did a whole lot in the bad. meanwhile. <laughs> you know, Lucia was just sitting there thinking about her life choices. <laughs> Why did she join this club? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Maybe wow. I should have gone solo. <laughs> like after she says that, VV just tells him, "You, you, you did a great job. Thank you. Nice flower." As she like walks past him, <laughs> she goes over to conduit, hands on her hips. <laughs> so you do the basic things again, like you go over like the basics of what your powers are. You demonstrate kind of what you can do. Uh, I think to demonstrate like some of your illusion and invisibility type powers prophetess generates like a field of neon like construct type people that seem to react to the sight of you and when you use your invisibility or illusions they either react or don't react depending on whether you can be seen or not Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and what are you thinking as you're practicing with this crowd of digital people I think she's like moving around and trying to like slink around And because they're moving around too, right? Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is basically like a, almost like the lady in the red dress scene from The Matrix, except the people are more like glowing silhouettes of people than actual people. Yeah, fair enough, fair enough. But I think like any time that she does get dinged for getting caught or whatever, I think there's this part of her that's just like, if I could just figure it out, like if I could just, I don't know, like catch a pattern, figure it out, see what's going on. She starts to get this sort of, like, skin on the back of her neck kind of tingling sensation. And she starts kind of reacting to that, like, following her first instinct of, okay, well, I'm feeling that feeling, so I'm going to go to the left. And she looks over her shoulder, and she just barely dodged out of the way of possibly getting seen by one of these people. Mm -hmm. Um, And she's like, okay, that's a 
weird, but seems to be, you know, right on the nose. So I think she starts following that instinct. Mm -hmm. This weird sense of what is most likely going to happen next. Yeah. As prophetess and conduits start to notice this is what you're doing with a crowd, you start to notice that some of the silhouettes start to move more aggressively in your direction. Like, occasionally they'll actually, like, take a swipe at you. Oh, okay. Yeah, and I think she's, you know, doing her best to dodge out of that, moving and, and weaving and stuff. And as she's getting more internally kind of stressed and panicked of like, oh, okay, barely moved that one, barely got past that one, it almost becomes easier but it's not because she's moving any better it's almost like if you're paying close attention they're somehow moving worse it's almost like they're stumbling or something but only when they get particularly close to her all right yeah no i like that a lot and to see how generally well this works out i'm gonna have you roll to unleash your powers cool goodness please Oh no, okay. I got a six. <laughs> yeah, so I think generally, like like everybody else so far, I think the powers side of this is going to keep going well for you, but I think this is a stressful situation for you. Oh yeah, totally. Oh. Especially since your dream was about literally being invisible and not being able to be seen. Yeah, so I think it's just getting more and more frustrating. And you said that like um, we're on this like sort of Tron electric field, right? Mm-hmm. I think it's like she's getting more and more stressed. Even though she's still invisible, this like pink crackling energy sparks out from where you now know her feet are. And all of the lights by that spot start to flicker as if there was some sort of glitch with them. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Well, I am going to have you mark a condition to represent your stress, but I, I definitely still want you to chase this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to mark afraid, because this is kind of, like I said, what she's afraid of. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, I think, like, that energy is crackling out as, like, in waves. And this is getting into sort of, like, that more intense luck manipulation. Um, what is Prophetess sitting on? Basically, like, a very tall DJ table made of hard light. Okay. As those energy waves are, like, crackling out, it starts to affect that stage in some Ooh. way whether it's glitching whether it even falls apart like it's just unfortunate <laughs> yeah no it definitely i think as this wave of like the holograms whatever they are glitching out expands further out um it starts to reach the edges of the podium dj stand and you can see panels start to disappear and like the whole structure starts to lean and uh, drop where parts have disappeared <laughs> Until the whole thing kind of breaks off, and then Prophetess goes like, ah, <laughs> and hits the ground. Um, I think as everything starts to crumble, like Lucia, poof, like back into existence. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm sorry. Um, I'm so sorry. <laughs> um. Oh, no, don't be. That was really impressive. Uh, that's Prophetess calling out to you from where she's dusting herself off. Like, no, that's really impressive. Not many people can reach that far and, and hit. <laughs> well, not many people can do that. Oh. <laughs> yeah, totally meant to do it too. Yeah, well, certainly that's what Conduit's here for, Um, and Conduit taps you on the shoulder like, would you like to try again with a little bit more control? Um, <laughs> I, God, she hates this. Because, <laughs> like, <laughs> she knows that they're helping, but it sometimes when you're young, you don't know that there is such a thing as constructive criticism. You hear the term a lot, doesn't yeah. actually exist. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I think she's just kind of like pouting and her face is all red and twisted up, but she takes his hand. You got this, Alicia. It's okay. Don't worry. Like everybody, like you're learning. This is a new aspect of your powers. Nobody expects you to be perfect at it right out the gate. Mm. Okay. Also, is Jaden trying to comfort and support Lucia? Wait, let me look at my mundane for Yes, I am. <laughs> yes, I am. Also, he has influence over Lucia. So. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to try and comfort. I'm going to use that influence as well to add a plus one. I'm not going to burn it to add a plus two. I think that's the thing sure. I can do, but I'm not going to do that. Yeah, yeah. Um, nope. Oh, no. Well, we could feasibly use team for something like this. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I think I'd like to try and help as well. All right. You have two team points, by the way. Yeah, Vivi steps forward and says, um, that was really impressive. Like, we're here to try to do things that we've never done before. So you'll you'll get better. And I, I just, I thought that was, that was really cool. So that bumps up to a seven, <laughs> which is a hit. Yeah. So on a hit, Lucia will hear the both of you. So Lucia gets to mark potential clear condition or shift labels if she opens up. Um, Keywords if she opens up, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> like you can choose not to. That's so true. I'm going to actually open up a little, open up for Lucia. I'm going to actually take potential instead of clearing a condition though. Sure. Yeah. Because you only have the one condition marked. Yeah, exactly. But I think she like stays really qu- like quiet for a couple of seconds too long and you're like, oh, okay, never mind. She's just going to be Lucia. But I think she like looks over her shoulder and she's still red in the face and still kind of pouting, but looks up at you too and is just like, thanks. And you realize that it's not because she's angry or anything. She's more genuinely flustered because it's very sweet Aww. and then goes back to focusing on conduit cute <laughs> all right and i'm gonna say that'll give you a, a well conduit was gonna give you a plus one anyway but <laughs> this will be a special Ew. plus one um for your next unleash your powers okay cool i will try right now that's a nine yay <laughs> we like a nine yeah so what are you trying to do like it's a hit so whatever it is it's gonna work Ooh. okay 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 so we just kind of talked about like her being able to harden light and Mm -hmm. use that. And so I think as they're dancing, Lucia starts to make, like, stepping pedestals of hard light. So it looks like they're literally dancing on air because you can't see them, really, except for their sort of, like, iridescent shimmer when the light hits them correctly or something like that. Um, but it gives them space to walk on air. Nice. Oh, I like mm-hmm. that. So it's performance ready too. Um, and I think since it's a mixed success, I think this goes perfectly well until you finish the dance and realize how high up in the air you are. Yeah. And I think Lucia like squeals and clings onto conduit because she's scared. She's a scared <laughs> child. That's why. <laughs> And then it all comes crashing down. Yeah, and he calmly, like, grabs you and, like, assumes the position to land on his feet <laughs> as you fall yeah. out of the air. Oh, cool. Sorry. So I'm not going to mark a condition for that. It's just going to be a slightly awkward end to the dance. Yeah. <laughs> Incredibly awkward. Yeah, um, but it, it worked super well otherwise. Yeah. You hit Wily e. Coyote logic when you looked down. Exactly. Yeah. Um... Thanks. And she bolts off. It's <laughs> been entirely too much attention on her. Aww. <laughs> Without her looking the best that she is. Don't awe. <laughs> she angry. Don't talk. Don't talk. <laughs> yeah, she's going to go and plop back down on the ground. <laughs> Just sit there. Queen Bee gives her a look. Like, not a bad look, just, uh, what, jealous? Oh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now we've got another anti-grav person in the group. Oh. Ooh. Yeah, <laughs> Queen Bee was just starting to get used to not think of herself as the weakest one in the group, and oh. now she does, oh, now no. she pulls this. No. Aww. Um, I think Lucia, I'm sorry, she can't help it. I think Lucia, like, sees that look and kind of, like, her face kind of hardens a bit and she just like lifts her chin up like what <laughs> this group is truly just four insecure <laughs> teenagers try- constantly trying to one-up each other and then Jaden who's and having Jayden. a good time and Jayden's 100% <laughs> true that's 100% I literally, true I literally want to say like Jaden's very insecure but you know it just he, he focuses that energy on himself yeah he <laughs> He lifts people up instead of just trying to one up them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Honestly, I'm just about to say, like, to contradict that, Jaden's gonna make like a few flowers <laughs> um, bloom around Lucia, um, as he sees her like kind of <laughs> plop down on the ground to like tear to her up. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Ew. <laughs> <laughs> um. 
She doesn't <laughs> say anything. She just sits there. <laughs> <laughs> but she doesn't say anything bad either. Like, she's not like, yo, yeah. go away. She just doesn't say anything. But no, the group is literally four people constantly trying to compete with one another. And Jaden being like, well, I'm a garbage bag that was given sentience. You all are amazing. <laughs> <laughs> you all of you are incredible. <laughs> Side note, not true. But that is <laughs> Jaden's no. mindset. Yes. <laughs> So I think Conduit and Prophetess have just been watching with bemused expressions for a moment while y'all do this before Conduit gives the invitation for the next person to come up. Uh, Queen Bee would like to go in if it's okay. Mm -hmm. I think that makes sense. All right. (laughs) She struts up to Conduit. All right. All right. I like the confidence. So I do bees. Excuse me? I, I control bees. Oh, okay. I okay. So, uh, yeah. No, I've I've seen idols with insect control before. I haven't seen one with, specifically with bees. That's cool. Uh, she's also a fantastic dancer and can fly and climb uh, and walk I, on Angie, the wall sideways. Angie, she's the I, best. <laughs> I can fly, Angie. Like I love you, but you need to. Well, stop. you don't know that. Maybe who knows? You could maybe. If you can already walk on the walls, I don't see why not. I thought you flew in an episode. Maybe that was Vivi. That might be T mixing things up. <laughs> I just took that as Angie, like trying to hype her up, being like, my best friend can do yeah. anything. <laughs> yeah, yes. that's what I was thinking. <laughs> that's my best friend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's my best friend. She's the best. I believe you, Psychic Tiger, and Conduit gives you a thumbs up. <laughs> Fuck him up! <laughs> <laughs> the classic being raped and rallying cry. <laughs> Conduit's like, yeah, no, I don't see why you wouldn't be able to fly if you've already got some level of like anti gravity stuff going on. Like, do you want to? Do you want to see if that's a thing you can try? Um, and he puts his hands on your shoulders, and you feel that flow of power within you. Uh, thank you, but right now I want to focus on my bees. All right. Well. Have at them, then. And Prophetess turns some dials on her turntable, and a swarm of neon hard light bees appears. Um, conveniently, your powers will still work on them. Queen Bee is going to try and uh, get control of the bees and move them uh, around a bit, creating a bit of a, a swarm effect. All right. But then she's going to try and channel more energy in the bees. Like, they're already neon, but they start to, like, hum with energy. Hmm. Yeah, I think you can probably even see almost like a glowing energy connection between the individual bees, like an aura that connects them all. And uh, can I get, like, a line of cans? Yeah, sure. You ask Prophetess, um, and she sets up a shooting gallery thing of cans for you. Okay, so what Queen Bee wants to do is to channel the energy through the single bees, like the abdomen lights up and the energy flows through the stinger. And so, it, like, this thing is also a uh, discharge of energy. Oh, awesome. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, roll for that. Okay, freak. Hell yeah. Oh, yes. So that is an 11 full hit. Describe how this goes. A line of cans appear. Queen Bee sends one single bee that lands on the side of one of the can. You can see the stinger lifting up lighting up, then there's a flash of light and the can gets thrown back a hundred feet. Oh! Hell yeah, best friend! <laughs> Ooh! <laughs> yeah, no, that's something. And and Conduit, like, claps for you and it's like, yeah, no, chase that, chase that. Maybe we can work on, on like, a group control. Yeah, sure, and I think the line of cans becomes, like, a pyramid of cans, like a carnival game that you could knock over. Okay. Maybe it starts, uh, knocking down a few cans, but now she's trying to get the bees to swarm together in like an attack formation and just uh, ram the pile of cans. All right, and I think this is close enough to the same roll that I'm going to let your success ride on this one. Okay, wonderful. And then I want to do something different. Oh, yeah. Okay, I, I need a little space. Oh, sure. Everybody backs up a bit. Okay, Queen Bee stands at the center in a like a flat surface and all the bees land on the ground around her like completely covering and they start to light up 
and uh, like uh, creating a pattern. And I'm trying to actually have the disco bees. Oh! Disco bees! Disco bees! Yes! <laughs> and uh, like uh, the idea is that whenever I take a step, the bees move to accommodate me. And they also light up, creating like an hexagonal effect. Yeah, like a Saturday Night Fever dance floor type thing. Yes. Oh my god, that's so cool! Gonna try. Uh, is it uh, Flat Freak or there's a bonus? You haven't needed Conduit's like direct dancing help so far, so I think it's just a flat one. Okay. And that's Ooh. another 11. <laughs> okay. And I'm gonna try one more ambitious thing. Oh, sure. So I start dancing in uh, a widening circle as the bees create this uh, light up effect on the floor. And then an area of bees starts swarming and they start building like a step, an hexagonal step made of uh, beeswax. Oh! And it just, uh, like, they swarm up, they, like, it's like uh, two feet tall, one feet wide, and it uh, lights up for a second when it's complete as it hardens, and uh, Queen Bee leaps on it, and now she has, uh, like, a step thing. And she's gonna try and make a few more that she can leap from one another, going higher and higher. Oh my god. Yeah, so you, you definitely do that. How high do you think you get? Well, let's see. Can I roll, or...? <laughs> sure, go one more rolls. I think probably no more than, like, ten feet tops. Oh! <laughs> oh no! Yeah, so I think it's gonna be a similar thing to what happened with Lucia. You get quite high, and then you lose your nerve, maybe, or like you realize how high you are, and uh, something goes wrong. Or maybe the beeswax just collapses because it's not strong enough to. Sure. Yeah. So you you manage to get high enough, but it, eventually the beeswax has diminishing returns, and eventually the step that you step on cracks and falls through, and you go plummeting down. Oh. Well. Thank you. I guess. That was pretty cool. Thanks, Jaden. Are you okay? Oh yeah, yeah. Just it's just a, just a dream. Don't worry. Oh yeah, no, sorry. I keep forgetting. Yeah, a dream that's still going to cause you a condition, though. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Well, this is a hopeless. Oh. So yeah, Queen Bee throws uh, another look at Trixie and sits down. Oh, she makes <laughs> like. A wax seed. <laughs> and Jaden's going to make more flowers grow around her as well. <laughs> oh. She's having too much fun with this <laughs> at this point. The bees appreciate. Yeah, they're not real bees, but they still look like they're enjoying themselves. And having a blast. I'm going to go over and nuzzle her hand. Oh, Because I'm in cat yeah. form. Okay, uh, Queen Bee just hugs. And I, I like this increasingly like pastoral corner of the the tron <laughs> grid <laughs> this like yeah. field of like grass and flowers and uh, like a, and a frolicking tiger and this wax <laughs> seat but they're also like hyper it, it's like a weird solar punk meets cyberpunk situation because it's yeah. all like yeah, ultraviolet colors <laughs> yeah yeah it is yeah i find it so funny because like Jaden's like the human equivalent of a golden retriever in my head. And we've got, <laughs> yes. also got a literal cat now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. And uh, Conduit says, well, I guess that leaves us with one more person. Uh, Violence Violet, why don't you come up and show us what you can do? All right. And Vivi walks over and she's been sort of going through what to say in her head. She says, all right, well, I... I have several powers, which um, I guess I don't. Well, I can I can show you, obviously. Yeah, um, I think you 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 explain what they all are, and you like give a demonstration of the ones you feel comfortable with, maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I think uh, I, I I think she's she's very focused on ex like explaining her powers, maybe in a way that's like not what he's looking for. But or like explaining her limitations because she's she's thought about this specifically. And says, "Well, see, I can make constructs, but I can't move things very well with my telepathy, and I can't really push things with my constructs. That's see, that's that's why I make swords and knives and blades. It 
they don't they don't need a lot of a lot of force to push things and and I can I can swing the sword and and add force myself. So um okay. Um I that's great. I am hearing a lot of I can't. What what is what gave you the impression that you couldn't do certain things? Like just that it didn't come easily or that no matter how much effort you put in, you couldn't do a certain thing. Oh, I I mean I I put in a lot of effort, but I can only move small things. I I tried opening a door with my powers and I could push the handle, but I I couldn't I couldn't move the whole door. Well, it is entirely possible that that might be a limitation of your powers, but it could also be something like with uh, Bane Raven, where like it, you just like need the right motivation, or maybe it's like the equivalent of flexing a muscle, where the more you work it out, the stronger it gets. So, uh, I'd be curious to see like what you can do with the extra boost. I'm I'm really curious. So he he goes up to your shoulders and gives you that warm boost of power. All right. Um. And Vivi closes her eyes, and then the ground in a wide area around them starts to glow purple, and a staircase lifts up underneath them, carrying both of them at at the top, and, like, walls come up around them, and spikes on top of the walls, and this, like, miniature castle appears coming out of the ground, and the platform that Vivi and Conduit are on swings around and attaches to one of the walls and, like, I think the platform, like, detaches from the wall where it was, or, like, the the top of it detaches, leaving just a staircase leading up to that wall, and she, like, flies on the platform to a spire in the the middle of this uh, sort of courtyard that she's created with her powers. Oh, goodness. Is this castle forming around everybody, or is there just, like, a space in the middle of it? Uh, I think everyone's, like, lifted up onto the walls around, so they end up in sort of a courtyard with everyone watching from the walls that came up under them where they were standing, and and Vivi and Conduit, like, in the center of this courtyard or, or arena, what have you, looking down when she opens her eyes. Well, I would say that's probably quite a bit more than maybe you've done before. What, I, am I right in saying so? Um, yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I also, I, I could picture things like, like this before, but I couldn't make my construct this big or elaborate or, um, fly while I'm standing on them. Yeah, well, I think in that case, it's probably like what I said before. Like, it seems like this might be the kind of thing where, like, you haven't been doing this for very long and you might just need to work out whatever like muscle or power is at work in there. You might just need to work it out more in order to like more consistently do these more elaborate things. I think you're plenty capable of creating something this big and impressive. Clearly you are. Oh, thank you. That, that makes sense. And like, have you been able to use like the floating platform before or like have you always had to have that connected to like a surface before yeah i i could create a platform and stand on it and it would sit on the ground but i couldn't lift it off that's why Mm. i usually make stairs yeah i'd I'd like to see a little bit more of that like we were talking about like anti-gravity and flying before like show me a bit more of that and i I just realized i forgot to make you roll before so here's where i'm gonna make you roll something okay yeah that yeah, Vivi thinks about it, and um, I think she says, well, I've also got some powers I, I don't think I, I'm supposed to have. H- how uh, so? Like, um, And she holds out her arm, and the ribbon on her costume stretches out from where it is and, like, wraps around her arm and hangs off like a whip. Cool, cool. And because this is, like, um, you've got this boost going on, I'm not going to make you mark your doom mm-hmm. track to use this power. Okay, I was going to ask about that. Um, and she says, yeah, I, I'm only supposed to have telekinesis and constructs and well shape-shifting which i don't usually use but this is totally new okay so it seems like you might have a much larger reservoir of power than maybe even like you expected like i'm curious how did you how do you know like what powers you're supposed to have usually like when like i was talking about earlier like people discover that they have specific powers, but then maybe find out that they have ones they didn't know about, like 
like Bane Raven or like, well, anybody here. Like, how do you know that there's only the specific ones? Uh, v- Vivi's eyes go a little wide, like she just realized she said something she wasn't supposed to say. Uh, mm. I, I've had training before and was was told that those were all the the powers that I had. Really, does Rain Shadow have someone who can like detect powers within someone? I guess there are people who can do that kind of thing. And I, I'm I'm actually gonna maybe ask you to roll provoke someone to see if Conduit believes what you're saying. Uh, yes, they they have um some people with with powers that are help with with other powers like yours. Mm-hmm. All right, so I think I'm gonna ask you to roll plus superior for provoke someone because I think there is a chance that because. Conduit knows about Rain Shadow. There is a chance mm-hmm. with his industry knowledge he might also know about the rumors about them. So we'll see how well that works out. Oh wow. Oh. <laughs> that is boxcars. Yeah, that's a 14 kapow. <laughs> kapow. On the roll 20. Oh my goodness. Okay, yeah. So he like you seem sincere enough. He totally believes you. And he doesn't like work for Rain Shadow, so he doesn't know that there's any reason why you would tell a lie about this. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, like, he nods along, like, okay, yeah, uh, all right, yeah, uh, okay, that's cool, I guess. Uh, that's weird that they, they wouldn't, like, detect some of the extra stuff, I guess, but nobody's powers are perfect, either. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I think at this point, Vivi's going to take the opportunity to try to use this, um, you know, to, to show this off again. I think this would be a good point to roll to unleash. Sure. She's going to try to use the ribbon to, like, a Spider-Man to another part of this courtyard that she's made. Oh, Spider-Man, but make it goth. Yes. I guess that's just Venom, but a, a different type of goth. <laughs> yes, that's a six. Okay. So, I like like the other roles so far, I think that's going to work, but um, you're definitely, like, you're still thinking about the first time you used this power. Yeah, and I'm going to mark guilty for that reason. Sure. Uh, incidentally, that also fills up my potential. Yay! Is there anything you'd like to take now, or would you like to save that for later? I'll save that for later. Okay. So anyway, um, describe how this ribbon Spider Woman scene goes. Yeah, the she reaches out and the the ribbon shoots out and wraps around the parapet on one of the corners of these walls and she pulls on that and it pulls her along and she lands on the wall next to that tower, turns around and wraps the ribbon around another one and pulls and starts to swing around the next one as she gets used to it and I think as she swings around she's starting to get more confident and tries to grab onto another one without landing and just sort of um, misses and remembers what happened the first time she tried to use this ribbon by accident and the shot misses and she falls and has to... I think what happens is when she has sort of a brief flashback, the ribbon just goes limp and stops doing what it was doing. Yeah, yeah. She feels guilty and hesitates and falls and has to create a ramp for herself towards the ground. Well... I think that's, like, obviously the control can get better, but I think you definitely have it within you to, like, do a lot with both the powers that you know you have and clearly some of the ones that you don't. Like, are there is there anything else you think that you can feel, like, just from, like, what's flowing within you right now? Or, like, do you, th- uh, what do you think? Um, no, I, I think I have a, a lot to think about. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, and I would love to to practice more with all of you. Um, and he calls up. I guess he calls up to the people on the par- to all of you on the parapets up at the top. Um, maybe uh, <laughs> Vivi wants to bring them back down to the ground. Mm-hmm. Um. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, sorry. And uh, another staircase flows down from that wall to the ground. <laughs> I uh, bound down the staircase because I'm so fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And once everybody gets down to the courtyard area. And Prophetess comes to join you all as well, the uh, conduit says. Uh, yeah, anyway, um, we would both love to work with you more. But again, we, we do have to 
work with all the campers here. So I, I guess we can't go too much more in depth, but I think we covered a lot. I think you all showed a lot of potential. I will say without the boost from my powers, these skills that we just went through might not come as easily to you. But I think just knowing that you have the potential to get there and knowing what it feels like to use them, I think will make it easier for you to get back to that level eventually. That's it's usually the case from what I've heard from people who have done this with before. Honestly, I'm still having fun. I'm having a lot of fun with this. I think I'm going to practice outside of the dream, but away from people. And he kind of looks up at the massive dandelion that's still <laughs> there. Yeah. Away from. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, for sure. Like you have the rest of the lodge grounds to your disposal. We're still inside the maze construct, so anything that you like do outside will revert back to normal once the maze dissipates. So you're free to practice outside, too. Okay, I'm definitely going to take you up with that. Awesome. And uh, Prophetess steps forward again and uh, d- does say, I, I do really want to apologize again for the way this all started, but I do think that you all, again, I... I like Conduit said, you showed a lot of promise, and I, I'm honestly really excited to see where you all go. You all show a lot of really cool abilities, and I think you have the skills necessary to push them really far while being safe. Got it. I'm, I'm not really mad at you anymore, I guess. Well, that's reassuring. I'm a little mad at me, but I appreciate that. Thank you. Jen just kind of turns to Angie. <laughs> Oh no, my mom's filing a complaint. I haven't changed my mind on that. All right, well, we might see you in court, and she waves politely to you. (laughs) (laughs) Lucia rolls her eyes at that, because that is the last thing she needs to hear about that court case. (laughs) (laughs) This is the voice of a woman who maybe might have gone through a a similar court procedure about this in the past. (laughs) That's fine. Let's do it. Let's do it. Vivi just nods politely and says, well... It was an honor to receive training from you. Thank you. Yeah. And I I will say, all of you, like, the punching aside, it's been kind of refreshing to watch you all train and work with you all. I'll be honest, a lot of the campers who come here are um, the children of fairly privileged families, and they're often a little more um, difficult, let's say. (laughs) So you all have a pretty, like, pretty easygoing and understanding attitude for the most part. She looks at Angie. Even the ones who don't have good reasons not to be. So I just wanted to say uh, thank you. And again, good luck out there. Thank you. Thank thank you. How do we get out? Yeah, I was wondering that too. Uh, Well, I'm going to have to generate the end of REM sleep for you, I I guess. Um, Time works a little bit differently in the dream world. So thankfully, this won't have been quite as much time as it is in the waking world, but um, still. Uh, anyway, this should all work out by the end of your sleep cycle, and then you can wake up and you can spend the rest of the afternoon as you please. So she gets her hands together and puts her fingers to her temples and starts to concentrate on the dreamscape, and you start to notice in the distance it starts to, like, like you know how, like, in films like Tron and The Matrix, like, the, the world will, like, break apart into, like, glitchy pieces, kind of like what Lucia did mm-hmm. to the Pixels. podium earlier. Yeah. So the world is starting to disintegrate around you, but it's in the distance for right now, so it's not right upon you yet. Oh, um, what's everyone's favorite flower? Go. A tiger lily now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> By which I love it. Vivi, like, looks a little surprised and says, violets? <laughs> She's got you there. I didn't know why, I don't know why I didn't think of that. Yeah, that's a good point, yeah. (laughs) Lucia just, like, plucks one of the ones that Jaden was growing and sticks it in her bun. (laughs) I'm gonna say that that one in particular was a rose. Very casually just growing roses. Like, that's not an extremely (laughs) difficult flower to grow. (laughs) No, 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 no. I think it's a rose that um, goes from a gradient of orange to yellow. Uh (laughs) Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Watch, we're going to get out, and then he's only going to be able to do dandelions. (laughs) God, I hope so. Wow. Well, okay, but, like, here's the thing. Creating a sea of dandelions and then a swirl wind to blow them around in the air. Oh, that's a good point, actually, yeah. Oh, yeah. And there's good eating in there. 
And I could probably do like cherry blossoms as well and do that. No. <laughs> now you're just your own <laughs> anime opening sequence. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's how we're going to show up on stage from now on. It's just yes. cherry blossoms and they're going to yes. swirl around no. us as we walk yes. on the stage. <laughs> no, when we come back from this camping trip and everybody's, we just like, strut on campus <laughs> yes. Yes. the first day back at school <laughs> yeah yes. first day back at school it's like literally Oran high school host club vibes <laughs> yes 100% <laughs> and at, like all the normal students are like it's not even spring it's, <laughs> it's why are you doing this <laughs> there's just a bunch of petals that end up on the hall floors this after <laughs> all like, oh, poor J- Jaden again <laughs> they only get away with it because they're a champion team. Jaden, some people have allergies. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, who else? Has everyone said their flower? Because I, I want Jaden's gonna make Ooh. everyone's favorite flower. Bellflower. Cute. A bellflower. Okay, cool. So just before like the world like disintegrates as we wake up, uh, he's gonna like kind of induce us um, flowers to grow at everyone's feet, and then quickly use some wind to pluck them and put them in everyone's hair that's that's what i'm gonna do that's what Jaden does i, I want Don't that make to work so i'm not please. gonna make you, you roll for that okay cool thank you <laughs> as your your flowers grow and everybody gets a flower in their hair and it the dream world is disintegrating around you the neon starts to dim and you start to fall into that part of sleep where it starts to get just blackness around you and you leave this area as you're transitioning out of this area you do get one last interesting bit of visuals before you wake up. Out of the blackness, you start to see and hear some fragments of images and sound, like the last, like, gasps of a dream ending. The first thing you see is wisps of swirling blue mist that pulsate with light as they move. You're not sure where they are. It seems to be many different places at once. But wherever they are, you hear the sounds of laughter and merriment and life, and most importantly, music. You hear many different styles of music, ones that you're familiar with, like you hear classical, you hear pop, you hear rock and hip hop, you hear styles that you've never heard before, but somehow it's not a cacophony, it just, it's all beautiful. And as these visions pass, you see a vision of the moon in the sky above, but shining with a brilliant iridescence, like a multicolored aura of its own that you've never seen before. And somehow in that same sky, you also see the sun, and it too has a similar iridescent radiance. And as these images play and you hear all this sound, the sound starts to drown out as the last image you see comes into focus which is a foggy city, thick and tall enough that the fog covers even the tallest buildings on the skyline. And from the top of that fog materializes a giant arrow-like structure made of red crystal, its wicked point aimed at the heavens above. And then the vision fades, and you all begin to wake up. And that's where we're going to end it today. Okay. Hmm. Did we just witness the apocalypse? Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, God, I'm curious. Wow. Interesting. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for listening to Super Idols RPG, and thanks to the wonderful cast of today's episode. Valerie slash Violence Violet was played by Dane Alexa, who can be found on Twitter at AuthorX. Angie slash Bane Raven was played by T. Jaden slash Elementum was played by Drac, who can be found on Twitter at Draconix. Alan slash Queen Bee was played by Luca, who can be found on Twitter at Queen Bee. 1516-0871. Lucia slash Trixie was played by Liv Chavez, who can be found on Twitter at Live in a Day. Dialogue and cleanup editing was done by Kathleen Childs, whose work can be found on the Sword of Symphonies podcast at peachgardengames.com. GMing, final editing, and mastering for this episode was done by me, Aaron Cerise. 
You can find me on Twitter and YouTube at Erin Cerise, and you can find more information and art for Super Idols on our website at superidolsrpg.wordpress.com. This campaign is played using Masks, a new generation, written by Brendan Conway and published by Magpie Games, with custom moves by Aaron Cerise and Zach P. Our opening theme is Le Chevalier Noir Instrumental by Cyborg Jeff, and is under license from Jumendo Music. Our ending theme is Born to Drive Me Crazy Instrumental by Humans Wit, and is under license from Storyblocks.com. All other incidental music and sound effects for this episode are licensed from Storyblocks.com and Freesound.org, with the exception of Loft, a Creative Commons track by Jam Jar, and Gothic Dark, a Creative Commons track by Paratune. Thank you all for listening, stay well, and goodbye until next time! Be gay! Roll dice! An LGBTQIA actual play podcast network.